Greetings, retro lover. Ethan here, aka The Ghost Mall. I produce 80s and early 90s style retro synth pop and soundtrack music. And in this video, I have a real treat for you. If you love the soundtracks from video games on one of the 90s most iconic consoles, the SNES or Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Replicating the sound of that music in a modern studio today is possible with special tools. And I'm gonna share one of those with you in this video. Let's take a look at the Koji VST keyboard from It Might Get Loud Productions. Now, before jumping into the plugin, here's a little backstory and some important retro tech history. I personally grew up in the 8 bit and 16 bit days, kind of the golden age of console video gaming. The NES was my first console, and the SNES remains my favorite console. And as a retro wave music producer, one of the most important nostalgic touchstones I have is the amazing music that accompanied the video games of my childhood. If you've been following the Ghost Mouse channel for a while now, you may be aware that I've already released a few tunes that mimic the gritty, funky sound of the Sega Genesis, or Sega Mega Drive, as it was called outside of the US. I'll be sure to put links into this video's description if you'd like to take a listen to those tunes. And experimenting with the authentic sounds from that console, and really trying to pay homage to some of the composers who did astonishing things with its FM synthesis chip, like Yuzo Koshiro, for example, has been a total joy for me as a retro inspired musician. But as much as I adore the FM sound of Sega's 16-bit machine, it was utterly different from the sound produced by its main rival, the SNES. This was due to the radically different tech in each console. While a complete comparison of the two consoles' divergent sound chips deserves a full-length video of its own, let me quickly cover the basics of why the two sounded so different. The Sega Genesis's music was produced by not one, but two sound chips, in tandem. The YM2612 from Yamaha, a six-voice, four-operator FM synth which also allowed limited sample playback from one channel, often used for drum sounds, and a four-voice PSG chip which was actually inherited from the Genesis's predecessor, the Sega Master System. Together, these chips produced a digital sound best described as aggressive, bright, and with a lot of character, partly due to a unique form of lo-fi noise and distortion called the ladder effect. While designing the SNES, on the other hand, Rival Nintendo took a dramatically different approach. Instead of using digitally generated pulse waves like the NES or the PSG chip in the Genesis, or using some other form of digital synthesis like the Genesis's FM synthesis, the SNES employs sample-based synthesis. In essence, sampling takes very short digital audio recordings, just snippets really, from actual instruments, and stores those for playback, mapping them to all available pitches and, to an extent, recreating the sound of the sampled instruments. That is, within the technical limits imposed by the quality of the sampling gear, of course. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, some massive, and massively expensive, sampling keyboards, such as the Fairlight CMI, New England Digital Synclavier, and Emu's Emulator Line, introduced this concept of sampling to the music-making world, and music production was never the same again. If you'd like to learn more about this, please check out my in-depth video on the Emu Emulator 2. I'll put the link in the description. Well, as technology improved and became more miniaturized and affordable, basic lo-fi sampling became a viable option for reproducing music in consumer devices, particularly personal computers and game consoles. The first popular example of this was the Commodore Amiga from the late 1980s, which included an 8-bit, 4-channel, stereo PCM sample-based sound chip affectionately named Paula. Enter the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1990. Its unique sound was defined by a custom hardware component designed by Sony, the S-SMP chip. This chip took the kind of digital audio sampling deployed by Paula on the Amiga to new levels by offering eight simultaneous audio channels at 16 bits plus eight channels of DSP allowing for further sound shaping via level, pan, envelopes, and a characteristic echo effect that became integral to what we recall now as the unique flavor of the SNES's sound. All right, so hopefully that two-minute primer on 16-bit video game audio helps you to understand what made SNES music 
stand apart from Genesis music, and vice versa. And this begs the question, what is a retro-inspired music producer or composer to do today, almost 25 years later, to create authentic-sounding tunes that recall the 16-bit era? Well, we need specialized tools, and lucky for us, there are a few fantastic ones available now in VST format. No outdated or unreliable hardware to fuss with, no cables, no awkward user interfaces. Just great in-the-box plugins that help us get miles closer to those nostalgic sounds. Which brings us to the particular piece of kit I want to share with you in this video. It's called Koji. The Koji Retro Gaming Keyboard is a plug-in instrument in VST, AU, and AAX formats from It Might Get Loud Productions. Koji's 57 built-in sounds are inspired by the short, lo-fi, noisy, and wonderfully cheesy sampled instruments that were prevalent on SNES soundtracks. The guys at It Might Get Loud took care to include the kinds of sounds that you heard in SNES games, from timpani drums and synth brass, to string sounds, slap bass, tune percussion, and even some very silly synth sounds perfect for fun, upbeat, Nintendo-style compositions. In addition to mimicking the glorious low-fidelity digital sampling of the SNES, Koji also includes an echo effect which provides a nice approximation of the console's unique echo-slash-reverb DSP, which really helped set it apart in the 16-bit days. Together, these features give Koji an authentically retro sound. Regarding Koji's user interface and controls, they're very simple, and also very fun if you're a retro fanatic. Modeled after a Super Famicom controller, the UI has buttons for stepping through presets, and just a few knobs for adjusting echo time, echo amount, and attack, and release. Oh, and check out our pixelated hero doing battle over here. That's a nice touch. Koji is currently available for $45 US via It Might Get Loud's website. However, I asked them if I might be able to offer a discount to the Ghost Malls viewers, and they've provided a 30% off coupon code for you, which I'll include in the description below. This is probably also a good time to mention that this is not a sponsored video, nor am I an affiliate for Koji. I was provided a free copy by It Might Get Loud in order to test it out and see if I wanted to share it with you, and since I think it's pretty neat, here we are. So that's Koji in a nutshell, but what you're really interested in is how it sounds and whether or not it can take you back in time to the 16-bit era, not just on paper, but when the sounds hit your nostalgia receptors. Well, I've gone ahead and created two short, simple demo tunes using the same kind of limitations an SNES composer might have had, like only eight simultaneous audio tracks and no effects but the built-in echo, so that you can hear and judge this little guy for yourself. First I have a medieval imperial march inspired by the likes of Zelda and Final Fantasy, and then I decided to knock out a little new jack swing jam. While the other 16-bit giant the Sega Genesis, is known for featuring loads of new jack swing on its OSTs, I wanted to see what the SNES might have sounded like in that style too. So let's take a listen, and after the demo tunes, I'll also play you several more of Koji's preset sounds.
Now here are some more of my favorite sounds from Koji, played individually. So hopefully you've heard enough to make up your mind about Koji's usefulness for making retro music, but here are my concluding thoughts. I had a blast making SNES-like jams with Koji, and I'm sure I'll be using it much more. The truth is, while there are a fair number of ways to get certain console sounds in your DAW today, especially NES, C64, and the like, the SNES has proven to be the toughest one to simulate in virtual instrument form. Part of that is down to copyright laws which have prevented the legal distribution of original SNES samples owned by Nintendo and other developers. The rest has to do with the difficulty of assembling the right sounds with just the right lo-fi elements all in one package. Now, 
I've mentioned several times on this channel my love for the Super Audio Cart Contact Suite by Impact Soundworks, which I absolutely adore and use for many retro game composition applications. It has great SNES style sounds, but is also a much more extensive product than Koji. That is, it covers the sound of numerous retro consoles, not just the SNES, and it has a price tag to match. For someone looking for a lighter weight, simpler, and more affordable way to instantly get some very SNES-worthy sounds into their music, I think Koji is a great alternative. As I said, it does have quite a simple user interface with limited features, and while I might have liked a bit more control over things like the ADSR envelope in general, I find Koji's simplicity to be a big part of its appeal. Like a classic video game console, it just does what it was meant to do. It's easy to use, sounds great, and maybe most important of all, it's lots of fun. Again, if you'd like to check out Koji for yourself, you can find all the info in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, Retro Lover. I hope that you got some value from this video, and if you did, please feel free to give it a like and maybe consider sharing it with someone else who might dig it. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this related to all things Retro Wave, then please feel free to subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss anything. And finally, if you liked my demo tunes for Koji, the links to download them for free are also in the video description. So thanks again for watching, my friend, and until next time, take it easy, keep it retro, and be well.